Esker fan Sam McEwen with the Omaha World Herald and Husker Extra. This is a brief half-court press podcast uh, previewing Nebraska's uh, trip to Spain, uh, Nebraska basketball. Uh, Joel is not with me today. Obviously, this is just a Nebraska-specific one. We will have a Creighton-specific one uh, next week uh, with Joel and I when Creighton uh, goes to the Bahamas. But this is uh, this is a very specific one for Nebraska. Okay. As Fred Hoiberg said on Monday, Nebraska will be very shorthanded when it goes to Spain uh, to play to play these games. Um, why? Well, because two of their best players, Rink Mast and Casey Tomanaga, are playing with their international teams, the Netherlands and Japan, uh, respectively. And then three more players will be out due to injuries. Blaze Keita, uh, who has an ankle injury, has not even been uh, cleared for contact yet. Josiah Alec has been cleared for non-contact work, um, but he is still rehabbing, and I think they have a pretty good sense of where he's at. And he played 1,000 minutes last year, so I don't think they want to overdo the wear and tear on him in Spain. And then Sam Hoiberg, Fred's son, has had some knee pain. I think they're just going to hold him out. I think they have a pretty good sense of what Sam Hoiberg brings to the table. And if there's one position where Nebraska seems like they need to get some more work for some of the other guys, it's probably guard. Um, because they've got uh, they've got some new ones. So as it stands right now, uh, Nebraska will have basically um, no height when they go to Spain. Now they they may not be playing anybody that that has you know um, a seven footer. Um, I, I that that's that's not entirely you know easy to say. Um, they're going to be playing in Madrid, Valencia, and uh, Barcelona. Although the last team they're going to play is I think Cataluna, the Cataluna All Stars. Um, but that game is actually in Barcelona. Um, Nebraska's not going to have much height. The tallest guy is going to be Bryce Williams at 6'7". Uh, he's probably going to play a little bit of 5. Uh, Nebraska will probably play some 5-out stuff, too. Jawan Gary will be back. Remember, he had in-season shoulder surgery, uh, which gave him a little bit more lead time to rehab. He has not been cleared for contact. He will return, um, but I don't think they're going to play him a lot. Hoiberg said they might give him 10 minutes a game. He's probably their most, uh, their burliest Front court player uh, Williams is is a shooter, a true wing, uh, and then from there they're just going to have to try to figure it out uh, and and try to be the best team that they can be without having a ton of rebounding. Uh, so Bryce Williams will learn more how to, you know he'll he'll get better at rebounding. Jawan Gary obviously already is maybe the team's best rebounder. Um, they'll get a little bit of rebounding out of Eli Rice, the true freshman that I think everybody's interested to see what he can do. Um, and then, of course, you've got all those guards. You've got Jamarcus Lawrence. You've got Aaron Ewis. You've got C.J. Wilcher. You've got Cale Jacobson, uh, who Fred uh, talked glowingly about yesterday, the walk-on from Ashland Greenwood, who redshirted last season. Uh, Fred compared him to Sam Hoiberg. You have Ramel Lloyd. And Ramel is a player that I think everybody's been kind of wondering, what's this guy going to become? Remember, he was a highly rated recruit out of Sierra Canyon High School in California. Uh, he redshirted last year, though, and did not play. And so this is his. This will be really his first time uh, to really do something interesting. He's probably going to get a lot of opportunities in Spain. I think you're going to see Cale Jacobson get a lot of opportunities. Obviously, Ulysses is going to get some opportunities to run things, and you'll see Bryce Williams get a lot of opportunities as well. Um, what do you watch for? I don't know. You know, I think I think Nebraska is probably going to try to shoot a lot of threes. They've got to get a sense of how good they are from beyond the arc. Um, I think they'll probably shoot the ball better out there than they have at any time during the Fred Hoiber era. But you are going to watch a guy like Jamarcus Lawrence. Can he? Does he going to look like a forty percent three point shooter? Can Aaron Euless, who has an odd setup in my opinion, long wind up kind of shot, accurate, but it takes him a while to get it out there. Um, can he be a thirty five percent three point shooter? Uh, can Bryce Williams do what he's already done at Charlotte? Can he? Can he? Uh, can he get shots? Um, both off the pass, uh, the pass, and can he create a shot of his own, um, where he's able to get a step back three or or go into the lane and and do something there? I think that'll be something worth watching. Everybody kind of knows what Jawan Gary is, and what we saw last year, he's not a three point shooter. So does he have some moves, maybe uh, some more in his repertoire? Uh, you know, inside of ten feet. I know they worked on his shooting. They felt like his shooting was off last year because of his shoulder. They've worked on that. Fred uh, is a shot doctor. Um, so I guess I'll be curious if Jawan Gary goes to Spain and he's seven of 17 from three, that would be progress. You know, my sense is he's going to go to Spain. It'll be about three of 11. And then, it, and then you just, you know, you have a pretty good sense of where he's going to be. 
Um, but I think there'll be an opportunity for Nebraska to kind of figure out what kind of guards they want um, and, and, and who they want, you know, bringing the ball up the court. That's still a question mark for this team at this moment. You know, Sam, uh, Sam Griesel did a lot of it last year. Uh, this year it's going to have to be by committee unless you decide Aaron Euless is that guy for you. I, th- I feel like the player that I'm going to be, the two players I'm going to be watching the most in Spain are going to be Romel Lloyd, because again, this is a player who had a whole year of development. How much better did he get? And um, Eli Rice. I think there's a buzz around this kid. Maybe it's maybe it doesn't lead to anything, um, but I think there's a buzz around him a little bit that this is a guy that can do some things as a shooter, um, that he can potentially be a scorer. Um, I'm not saying he's Isaiah Roby because I don't think he is. I, I very different players. But I think the potential, the, the fast-rising potential of Eli Rice reminds me a little bit of nobody was quite sure what they had in Roby, and Rice might be um, might be a player that can contribute quite a bit next year. Uh, you know, uh, six points a game, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists, that kind of player. Uh, a player that you can clearly see is going to be pretty good in the Big Ten. Um, Nebraska really could afford to hit on one of those. Um, obviously, Bryce McGowan's was a really good recruit, but everybody kind of expected that, and he was given a ton of opportunities to be good. It would be good if Nebraska got a pleasant surprise in recruiting, and I, I'd say the last one that they got that was truly pleasant was Roby. Um, and so we'll see if they're able to, you know, alight on on something with Eli Rice that makes it pretty interesting. Last note is on uh, the recruit Matar Diop, uh, who um, or Diop, uh, who signed with Nebraska over the weekend, and he will not be part of the team in Spain. He's not even going to Spain, um, but he is a 6'9 uh, post player. He then effectively becomes Nebraska's fourth post. Remember, Rink Master, Zaya Alec, Blaze Keita, and now Matar uh, becomes the fourth post. They had four last year, if people remember. Derek Walker was there um, last year. So was Blaze. So was Wilhelm Breidenbach. So was Oleg uh, yeah, those four guys, I think they wanted four again. They struck out in the transfer portal. They went after a couple of guys in the portal, transfer from Washington State, uh, transfer from West Virginia, a um, couple other transfers. Uh, they just they didn't come to Nebraska. They went to other schools. Uh, so um, this will be their fourth post. He's an incoming freshman, but he's 19. He's not 17. So he's probably a little bit more developed physically. Um, originally from Senegal, went through the NBA Academy Africa, program and uh, came to the United States, played for a, uh, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, an academy in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, they were not in public, they were not in the, the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association last year. Um, so I think he's still kind of developing as a player, but but he was third team all state in that. Uh, they were sort of a travel team that went around. Uh, so Fred Hoiberg feels like he can add something to the roster. You know, it's got a, a wingspan, seven foot three wingspan, good motor, um, uh, and potentially block, you know, uh, protect the rim, and also can give Nebraska what uh, Fred Hoiberg said was a lob opportunity. A lot of what Eduardo Andre did a couple of years ago, but I feel like their ne- Nebraska staff and Andre just were not on the same page of like what they wanted from him, the effort they wanted from him, what he wanted to put out uh, in terms of effort. So he goes to Fresno State, and I think he was pretty good last year. But it, effectively, what Eduardo Andre was, I think they want. From this new this new recruit, um, note of concern about Blaze Keita, you know, and, and Fred said yesterday, and Fred Fred is almost universally positive unless it's after a game, but he said Blaze Keita was right where they thought he would be in terms of his recovery, and that surprised me. Blaze Keita got hurt at the end of February, um, hurt his ankle at the end of February. He's it's been five months basically since he got surgery. He didn't play in the Big Ten tournament, and that was their last game of the year, and that was in early March. So it's probably been about, it's been roughly five months, maybe four months since he got surgery, and this is kind of where he's at. Josiah Alex way ahead of that. Now, Alec is a different frame, and I get that, and people heal differently, but Josiah Alec played 1,000 minutes last year. Keita only played 212. So there's concern there about, if you're only playing 200 minutes and that's where you're at, and Alec played 1,000 minutes and he's that far ahead in terms of his recovery, um, just a note of concern about where Keat is in terms of, uh, in terms of his development um, as, a, as a healthy player but also as a basketball player. If, if you're not cleared for anything, including non-contact stuff, 
you're not developing as a player. It's, it's hard to develop as a 6'11 post player when you're not able to do many of the things that you want to do. And so um, just, yeah, that's something worth watching. Somebody did ask him if he'd be ready for the season. And for it's like, well, you know, it's four months away. I do anticipate he'll be ready for the season. But I just don't, yeah, it, it, it feels like a situation where they had to go out and get a fourth post because I don't know that they're sure. I don't know that they're sure, sure that this guy is going to be 100% to start next year. So it could be Mast, Alex, uh, Alec, and then the recruit himself. Um, we'll find out. Okay, that is our Half Court Press podcast for the week. We're going to be back next week to recap Nebraska's first game in Spain, which is on Sunday, and also uh, to talk to Joel about Creighton's trip to the Bahamas, where the Jays will be a lot healthier, and <laughs> they'll probably have pretty much everybody available when they go uh, there. Okay. That is our podcast for this week. For Husker Extra and Omaha World Herald, I'm Sam McEwen.